This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Listen live weekday mornings, 8 to 9.30, or anytime you like as a podcast on the Tom Bernard app at TomBernardShow.com or wherever you get your podcasts. You horn tootin'. I'm just here to tell you. Um, I know this is turning, and I don't mean for this to happen, but I didn't see all this stuff coming and all the rest of it. I, who was the first person like about three months ago that died. And since then, it's been like two people a week for Christ's sake. I mean, I, I, I'm talking about friends. Of your friends? Well, yeah. I mean, I've known. I, I don't know who the first people. I don't know who the first one is, but there definitely have been quite a few, whether they're celebrities yeah. or just people that you've known, I feel like over the last six months that have passed away. Yeah. Well, there's another one today, ladies and gentlemen. He died a couple of days ago. Matter of fact, uh, his son and I are partners in some businesses and, uh, uh, I always enjoyed the guy. He's just a great guy, very, very funny guy. Ralph Burnett died, which is really unfortunate. I always liked Ralph a lot. He was, you know, the, here's a guy who took nothing and made it into something really huge, had a great career and all the rest of it. But when I would sit around, this was back in my cocktail in days. Okay. We'd sit around, Ryan and Ralph and I would sit around, and, you know, once in a while somebody else would, you know, a coach or a, a player or whatever. We'll come and sit with us on Ralph's. Uh, he had a like a deck. It was not really a deck. Well, I suppose it was kind of a deck in front of his house. And we would sit out there and drink and laugh our asses off. It was unbelievable. So Ralph was always a great guy to me. Ralphie, I thought you were a funny guy. I thought you were a good guy. And uh, I haven't seen him in a few years. I guess his health has not been great. I think it was reported that he died from Parkinson's, which is, I guess, not a great way to go. Yeah. That's what the Star Tribune says. Parkinson's, and he was 78. 78 years old, man. Ralphie, I'll miss you. Even though I hadn't seen him, like I said, his health hasn't been great in the last few years, but I hadn't seen him in a few, several years, as a matter of fact. Uh, but when we used to get together, man, it was unbelievable. No question about it. We, just, we always had fun. We laughed like a son of a bitch. Might have had a beer or a glass of wine or two, you know, one of those deals, but... Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just been one of those runs. I don't know if it's a winter thing in Minnesota or what the hell it is, but you know, it's, uh, Ralphie, all I know is I, I do miss you and I've missed you for s- several years cause I haven't seen you, but, uh, we did have a good time back in the day, man. That's all I know. We had a really, really good time. So God bless you, Ralph Burnett. And you know, notice I didn't mention the word heaven because he's a friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, Bernard, forget it. Get out. So I'm not even <laughs> going to mention it. In any case, what else is happening in the news? Anything good? Uh, well, you know, we're, we're supposed to get uh, some snow here today. So the people that have been feeding right. for that, that winter, that winter mix and that blustery snowfall, they're, uh, they're finally getting that sick wish of theirs. Yeah. I can see that happening. By the way, it's it's April in about what six days, seven days, eight days, whatever the hell it is. Yeah, about yep. a week out now. Oh yeah, you're right. It's the twenty second today, so ten days from now it's going to be April. April Fool's Day, apparently. And uh, and where am I going to be on April F- Fool's Day? Disney World. Hey now. <laughs> why am I a fool? Because it costs about ninety five thousand dollars per step. That's why. Yep. You take a family to Disney World, you better have some dough in the bank. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Holy God. Yeah. Get a little, get a little spendy there, Walt. That's all yeah. I'm saying. And, if, and as my mom would say when we went to the store, don't touch nothing when we get in there either. <laughs> <laughs> we're, just, we're just getting in and out. Like, yeah. Get away from everything. Yep. No question about it. You know, one thing I love about what you just did, it popped into my head, and if a kid ever did this, it would be cool. But you would see on the America's Funniest Home videos or other, mo- mostly cop shows, though, it was like, you know, the cop uh, video shows. Mm-hmm. Guys would be walking along, and they'd look down and notice, oh, my God, some, somebody left a wet spot here. They didn't wipe it up or they haven't gotten to it yet. They would double back and not realizing, of course, they're on camera the whole time. You know when you're in a grocery store, you're on camera the whole damn time. Right. I hope you know that. Yeah. Well, and if you don't, you're a dimwit. So the guy looks down, and he's kind of examining it and looking at it, and then he backs up with his cart out of, the, out of that shot onto the next one. Then he comes back into that shot, walks along, and, of course, he slips and falls in the wet spot and hits his head. And Oh, I can't get up. I'm really hurt. <laughs> <laughs> God. 
<laughs> you're that desperate for money that you're going to do something like that. I mean, seriously, folks, you're always on camera now. Uh, is there any place you can go, particularly in a downtown area, where you're not on camera? No. No, there's, especially if you're downtown, there's so many street cameras or businesses that yes. just have their own security cameras, ATM cameras. It's, you have to go out in the middle of the woods to not be on camera. And there's probably a satellite out there too. Yeah, that's it. There's no question about that. I, I, there's probably is a satellite watching you from space anyway. So what the hell's the difference? But uh, yeah, it's, it is what it is, I guess. Why don't we take a break? We got uh, Phil with us this morning because it is a Friday. So we've had to put up with Judd for three days. Now we have to put up with Phil for two days, a Friday and a, and a Monday. But, you know, so at least we get a break with Judd. There's no break. No. <laughs> it's very difficult, you know. Shoulder to the wheel. That's all I'm saying. We will be right back. Phil Mackey, Score North, will join us right after this. March means it's springtime, and that means spring cleaning. And your carpets and air ducts are the first item on my list. Your carpet and ducts are your biggest air filters in your home, and you could be breathing in nasty dust, dander. You ever breathed in dander? I don't even know what the hell that is. And bacteria. I'm going to find out what dander is. Uh, Zero has platinum-rated cleaning systems and environmentally friendly ZR water to the rescue with these limited-time offers. Here they are. Three rooms of carpet clean, starting at just $129. That's a $40 savings. $75 off air duct cleaning and 20% off all upholstery cleaning, too. Zero Res has over 17,000 reviews with an average 4.9 star rating. So their gotta love it guarantee ensures your spring cleaning will leave your home looking and smelling how it should. All you have to do is call 952-Z-E-R-O-R-E-Z or visit ZeroResMinnesota.com to schedule your spring cleaning offer today. Be sure to ask for the Tom Bernard special, please. Zero Res, spell it forward or backward, it spells the same. Schedule your appointment today and beat the spring cleaning rush. The past several years have been the craziest in the history of the car business. The pandemic, supply chain and chip issues, all causing extreme inventory shortages that led to, well, predatory pricing. Some dealers charge thousands of dollars over MSRP. We never played that game. I'm Jim Paul of Alley Buick GMC. We knew that would leave a bad taste in a customer's mouth. More importantly, from an integrity standpoint, it was just wrong. So what about the current market? You know, inventory and pricing. Valley has their best inventory in years. Really all the Buick and GMC models. Even the previously hard to find Yukons, HD pickups, and Hummer EVs. Plenty of deep discounts. Many with factory rebates and low interest financing. Then it's a good time to buy? It's a great time. We're welcoming our previous customers back, as well as anyone else that felt the treatment just didn't feel right the last time somewhere else. Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley and Hastings or valleycardealers.com. Car buying without the bad aftertaste. One of these days we're going to have to have Jim Paul on the show. He's a hell of a guy. That's all I'm saying. Known him for about, well, oh, only about 40 years. In addition to having the best selection in town, k &L Surplus and Ammo also can help you sell your firearm safely and most important, worry-free. Uh, let's say you've inherited a collection of firearms from a loved one, you don't know what to do with them, or if you have guns you're no longer using, call Jim at K&L Surplus and Ammo. Jim can help you sell those firearms safely through consignment and auction. I know Jim. He's extremely knowledgeable and will help you get top dollar. He will help you explore all the options and take the work and stress off your shoulders. I wonder if, I, if somebody called Jim and said, Hey, Jim, you know Tom, don't you? And Jim would go, yeah, he's extremely knowledgeable and will help you get top. You think he'd do that for me too? I would hope so. That'd be great. So yeah, here's the deal. He will help you explore all the options and take the work and stress off your shoulders. K&L Surplus and Ammo is on Lake Drive in Lina Lakes. A great shop. Been there several times. And they're open Tuesday through Saturday. You can also visit them online at www.klgunstore.com. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. We're back. What do you think of that? Every time they hit that, I always think I should go, Catman at 1500 KSTP. <laughs> That's what I feel like doing right here. That bam. What do you think? There's a little, little, little Hulk Hogan in that voice you just did. Oh, you know something, brother. Yeah, let me tell you, my brother, I was talking to him last week. And it's kind of a Jesse kind of a yeah. combo, isn't it? Yeah, the, I think yeah, Jesse. I feel like Jesse inspired a lot of those wrestler voices oh, yeah. in the 80s and 90s. You know? There's no good. And I think that is actually Jesse's real voice. I don't think he puts that on. No, maybe he turns the volume up on it just a little bit. Yes, because I will tell you, I've heard him before. I haven't seen him in years and years now, but we used to be pretty close friends back in the day before he came governor in a big shot. 
But what I loved about Jesse is, let's say, okay, so Phil's coming on the show in a couple of seconds, so i got to tell him a secret. So I'll be Jesse telling Phil Mackey a secret. All right, like, so when we're on, yeah. you can't talk about this certain situation. I mean, that was his whisper for Christ. <laughs> like, whoa, okay. I don't know it's going to work. But, but lean uh, in a little closer there, yeah. yeah. Lean in so you can hear me. I still think that Jesse Ventura and Gorilla Monsoon, oh, the, sure. the, the, the WWF commentator team from, like, the, the 80s and early 90s, best commentary team in wrestling history. Maybe in sports history, Tom. Well, I, don't, I would not argue that. Jesse was phenomenal doing that job. He was terrific. There's no question. You can't we need more of that in regular sports where there's like a heel or bad guy announcer that's rooting for bad things to happen. Like Jesse Ventura, Bobby the Brain Heenan was that way, Jerry sure. Lawler, where they are. If, yep. someone, if someone cheats on the football field, they're celebrating the cheating and laughing like a weasel at the good guy team. Have you ever hung out with a professional wrestler? Several of them, yes. Yeah, me too. I mean, Hawk and Animal, and they're both gone now, which makes me sad. Everybody's dying that I know, Phil, by the way. You know, Ralph Vernon died a couple of days ago, and it's like, oh, my God. And it's people, like, between 25 and 80. So it's the- Well, the wrestlers from that era, you're talking, like, yep. Hawk, Animal, anyone who came in in, like, the late 70s to the early 90s, you were yep. just, culturally, you were just swept up in... There weren't a lot of guidelines and a lot of parameters. Nope. There wasn't drug testing. So you're on the road for 300 days a year. You're drinking. You're doing drugs. You're doing steroids. It's a wonder that any of them are still alive, quite frankly. One of my favorite stories, Kendall Norberg is one of my best friends in the world. He's a very, very strong guy, big-time lifter. He used to lift with them all the time. But the first time Catherine ever went to dinner with us, the hawk and animal, Kendall was there. And... You know, this is 40 years ago. So or back longer than that, it was like 42 or 43 years ago. Catherine trying to fit in. She goes, you know, guys, I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, Tom can bench press over 300 pounds. Oh. There's a pause and you go, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not the way that you want to try and relate to two of the largest human uh, beings on the planet, right? <laughs> and I think I brought this up to you before. Do you know what the bench press record is now? It's got to be, what, 600-some pounds? I mean, what is it? What I would have thought, you can look it up, 1,150 what? pounds. <laughs> it's like lifting a car. 1,100 pounds? That's what the, no, that's what the jacket, which they didn't used to let you wear, you know, that, that uh, benching jacket they have now. It kind of keeps everything in place, which is, in a way, cheating. Because like a hernia prevention thing, or what? Well, when you no, say keeps balance. everything in place, what do you mean by that? I'm talking about balancing the bar and all that stuff. Because oh. if, if you lift in that much weight and it tips a little one way, you're screwed. Well, but that should be part of the. If you can't, if you can't keep it balanced yourself, then I what know. are we? What are we even doing here? But I honestly got the, the biggest part of it was when I go. There was a place called the Gym out in Plymouth that was co-owned by a friend of mine and Hawk and Animal as well, two friends of mine. So we used to go out there and lift. I hated it when I'd go in there and some of the female wrestlers would come in and outlift the piss out of me. I just yeah. really, thanks. I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming in. Great to see you. I mean, it is incredible though. I, when, when the Super Bowl was in town six years ago, we had animal animal was doing radio row. He was pre right. he had a podcast. He was telling wrestling stories on a podcast and uh, he came over and did 15, 20 minutes on our old radio show and just <laughs> told crazy stories. And oh, yeah, couldn't have been nicer. Couldn't have been more cool. And then, of course, his son became a star football player for Ohio yeah. State. Oh yeah, and yeah. Uh, and and played in the NFL and does. I think he still does radio in Columbus, Ohio. Actually, his son. Oh, does he really? Yeah, James Laurinaitis is his son. James Laurinaitis. He was uh, he was at uh, St. Louis back in the day, wasn't he? He was at St. Louis Rams. Rams. Yep. Yeah. He was. I think he was drafted by the St. Louis Rams, and yes. then maybe went to a couple other teams, but. What That's a family. A possibility. Yeah, I don't know him really. I, I, I knew him when he was a little kid. So that, I mean, he was like two years old when I first knew yeah. him. But, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's really unfortunate. Those Some really, really great people. I've, I took away from professional wrestling that most of them are very decent people, that it's all an act. They're just yeah. making money. It's a, it, they're, I always liked most. I can't name one professional wrestler I've met that I didn't like, to tell you the truth. Have I told you, this is like probably 10 years ago, my story about 
being the ring announcer for a big card at the convention center? No. And what happened? I want to hear it. So, okay. So, and I again, I've been a diehard wrestling fan since the late 80s, early 90s. I was born in 1985. So I grew up in, in kind of the cartoonish WWE era where it right. was Hogan and the ultimate warrior with his tassels and stuff. And <laughs> macho man snapping to a Slim Jim. Oh, yeah. Like that. Oh, yeah. Grew up in that era, but really fell in love with the Attitude Era of the oh, yeah. late 90s, where it was, I mean, you had WWF and WCW doing seven and eight shares on cable TV at the time. I know. It was crazy. <laughs> Stone Cold Steve Austin and Goldberg and all these guys, right? So, I don't know. Like Anyone from that era, I was just a total nerd if I ever met him in person. And I was asked to be a ring announcer for one of the matches on the Jerry Lynn retirement card. So Jerry Lynn, Minnesota-based independent wrestler, became big in ECW, WCW. And so it was centered around Jerry Lynn, but there was all these other stars like Tommy Dreamer was there and some of these ECW guys. But X-Pac was in the main event. Oh, God. Sean Waltman, also from Minnesota. (laughs) Like, all these dudes are from Minnesota. It's crazy. Right. And so there's probably 2,000 people, maybe 2,500 people inside one of the big ballrooms at the convention center. And at first in the back, so I didn't know, I didn't want to like step on anyone's toes. They're discussing what they're going to do in these matches. And I'm nervous because I don't want to say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing. So at first they were going to have me involved in an altercation in the ring where I punched out the opposing manager. (laughs) And I was like, yes, this is going to be amazing, right? (laughs) But somewhere along the line, they decided, you know, we don't trust you to pull this off. Like, we even just like one fake punch, we don't trust (laughs) you. So they kind of removed me from that. So I just did the ring announcing thing. And then I came back out for the main event along with some others to be like ringside. In the main event, X-Pac attempts to pull off his signature move, the Bronco Buster, where the opponent, you've done a few Bronco Busters in your lifetime. I've seen Who hasn't? So opponent is laying in the corner, <laughs> head on the first turnbuckle or second turnbuckle, and X-Pac runs across the ring, and ordinarily he would jump in the air, land on your chest, and ride you like a Bronco and whatever, right? Right. Well, the opponent had taken the turnbuckle pad off of oh. the the turnbuckle oh. and moves out of the way when X-Pac comes in, and X-Pac <laughs> hits the turnbuckle, right? goes down, and it's all planned, obviously, but... And and it leads to the finish of the match. What we didn't know was X-Pac split his ass crack open in real life. He gets, he was in pain and like a bunch of us are in the ring after, you know, saying hi to the fans, whatever. And he's like, I couldn't tell, man, is he still selling the move? Like what a great (laughs) performer. He's still (laughs) pretending to be hurt, right? They had to take him to HCMC to get stitched up. Ouch. You can Google the story. It's uh, he wound up taking off his singlet in the locker room, and a pool of blood poured out of it. Oh yeah! And that's oh. when he knew. I think I need some medical attention. <laughs> Have you guys ever taken a shot to the tailbone of any kind, fallen on it, or taken a shot to it, to baseball, whatever? What? Yeah, one time in like youth oh. football. Yeah, it's terrible. Oh, it hurts. So, in order for it to be hard enough to make it bleed, imagine how much that hurt. <laughs> oh God! Now. Ugh. We're going to learn something today, and maybe you guys already know this, but I doubt it. You know Goldberg's cousin. Did you know that? Is it Adam Goldberg? Nope. Well, it might be. might be. Former Vikings offensive lineman. Well, it could be. Is it the goalie from the Mighty Ducks? That's what I was just going to say. Oh, that's a good call. Mighty Ducks goalie. (laughs) Goldberg has a cousin that you guys all know very well, and I know him really well. Goldberg's cousin is now think of the least likely connection to Goldberg that you know. Um, such a great question. It's Mike Gelfand. Yeah, that Mike Gelfand. It. Wait, that's is that exactly act- right? That's true. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Mike no Gelfand way. is his cousin. I am not making that up. It's true. <laughs> AJ that nails is, it, baby. That is amazing. Wow, dude. AJ okay. nails it. I saw them sitting together once, and it's like, Goldberg, Gelfand, you're related? How? That's How proof, is it possible? That's proof that not everything is genetic. Not everything. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly right. I, there was, there was a, few, a few genes reached a fork in the road, and, and a few of them went toward Goldberg, and a few went toward Gelfand, right? Yep. 
You know what <laughs> I like about it so much? What does it just say, my? I think you accidentally hit a button on your keypad to put your. Uh... Oh, it's the keypad. Yeah. So, so if you hit settings, if you hit settings I, underneath on Streamyard, I think you just stopped your camera. If you hit start camera, yeah, dark we can still hear you. Yeah, I we're think still. Girlfriend paid me back for doing yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now <laughs> what do I, I do now? I hit stop camera or the next to the settings button. There should be where it says start camera. Uh, it just says camera. Hmm. Uh, oh, now you're there. We go. Is that it? This could I, be a whole podcast here. I Watch Tom try to fix technical issues on. Oh YouTube. yeah, you don't want me doing this stuff. I'm here to tell you. <laughs> there's a, leaning it. Oh, how about hot keys? Should I hit that? Yeah. So I did click cameras. Or something else I should dispatch mm. or depth stetch. What, By the way, what, I oh, would pay so right. much money to watch Goldberg deliver a jackhammer suplex pile driver to Mike Gelfand. Like, oh my, yeah. oh my gosh, how great would that be? Yeah, Tom, exit out of the <laughs> settings window you're on. Yeah, okay. and then now next to the settings button on the bottom, there should be a start camera. Option. Oh, there it is. I see it right there. there look there at that! Wow, look yeah. at that! Ah, he's, he's a genius, man. I'm talking to Tevin Pittman, and he's a genius with electronics. I don't know if you, and also, a bigger surprise: not only is Goldberg Gelfand's cousin, but so is Tevin. Yes, we the family reunions are quite interesting. You know what's so great about that? I told you guys pick the least likely person you know to be his cousin, and AJ just nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> yeah. Somehow, with that vague of a hint, I yeah. feel like you should be a little bit less obvious next time. <laughs> yeah. <man. laughs> Tom, you tipped him off because there's nobody <laughs> further away than Gelfand. <laughs> But to hear them talk, because you know, Goldberg would be going, yeah, so anyway, Mike, everything's going to I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Gelfand could be this, like the, the weaselly, squirrely manager for Goldberg. Oh, you know, yeah. the, the mouthpiece for oh, Goldberg. Been wonderful. There's no question. And I, like I said, I, I love to make the point that everybody goes, are you political? Nah, let me put it this way. How could I be political? Two of my best friends are Mike Gelfand, way left, and Mike Lindell, way right. So I'm pretty sure I'm not very political. Yeah. Wouldn't you you're think? Some, you're so, somewhere between those goalposts. Somewhere, <laughs> yeah. Those are big goalposts. Depending man. on the day, it might be further toward one end of the goalpost than the other, depending on. Another thing I did notice is way off, but I just have to get it out finally. I, I was scrolling through looking for somebody's number the other day, my, my phone. I know 22 people named Mike. That's a lot of people, man. Well, think about all the you you you've probably had a phone directory for 20 years, 25 years in your yeah. cell phone that transfers yep. over. I mean, it's it is kind of crazy when you go through like people that you entered their number 18 years ago cuz I I never <laughs> clear it out. I literally I have either. like numbers from college where it's like, you know, Bob bartender, Bob or you know. <laughs> yeah. I can't do it. I I have like I said, I've lost uh, friends over the years. They're, well, Vince Flynn's a good example. How long has Vince Flynn, Flynn been dead? Eight Is years. About eight years. That's Seven about right. Years. His number's still in my phone. I can't take it out. I just, I don't know what the hell that is. I can't do it. You ever text it just to see? You know, maybe he's. <laughs> Vince from heaven. <laughs> well, maybe it was go. all, maybe it was all just a big, a big story. And he's, uh, he's sitting on a beach somewhere. You should all we, hope. Should we reach out? Because I used to have a guy on the old Q show. Harry from heaven, Harry Carey from heaven. We should maybe get him on once in a while too. I think so. I think we, yeah. we've been talking about it. We should we should make it happen. Maybe for opening day next week, we could bring Harry from heaven. Barnard, control your monkeys. Yes. <laughs> I still love that line. It's a wonderful line. You know, baseball, by the way, off to a great start. So we've got okay. three different things that are going really well for baseball this week. Number one, the National League Cy Young Award winning pitcher from last year was still a free agent like 72 hours ago and like just oh. just signed with a team because baseball's offseason takes forever for guys to sign. Right. And then they start the regular season at 4 o'clock in the morning in Seoul, South Korea. <laughs> right. So nobody in America can watch the, the first game of the season. And by the way, the Dodgers and the Padres, they play the two regular season games halfway across the world at 4 o'clock in the morning, you know, Central time. And then they play three more spring training games in Arizona before they resume their regular season schedule. What happened to op just let's have an opening day? Can we all yeah. just play baseball on opening day? I mean, and then, yeah. uh, oh, by the way, Shohei Otani, the face of baseball, is being investigated for 
wiring four and a half million dollars yeah. to his translator for gambling. Okay. Yep. <laughs> I did see the. I maybe I do know some people, but I don't know anybody I could pick up the phone and go. You know, I just took a four and a half million dollar hit. Could you send it over? No. No, I don't know anybody like that. Yeah, and that's how it's being framed. But I mean, it it sounds like maybe Shohei was the one that was oh. placing. Which, by the way, I mean, people place bets, and I think the biggest question is going to be, was he betting on Angels games last year? Was he oh, was he God. betting on Dodgers spring training games that he's playing in? Oh. Well, because of Pete Rose, if he was, he's going to have to go. If if that's what's found out, yeah. I'd rather just reinstate Pete Rose I than agree. get rid of Shohei Otani. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Oh. Could you imagine the most marketable player they've had in probably a decade? To oh man! Not have this huge scandal that they're just going to ban in his prime. They no. paid. They paid a. They paid a billion dollars combined for Shohei Otani and the Japanese star pitcher that has a nine ERA in spring training and couldn't get out of the first inning in his first regular season game. Forty billion dollars. Forty five ERA after his first professional outing. It's what? amazing. Yeah, Yoshinobu it's Yamamoto. Forty five. <laughs> didn't get past the inning. It's hilarious. That's not good news, but but seriously, they're going to have to do something for Pete Rose mm -hmm. because he, they kicked it. He he can't get anywhere near the Hall of Fame or anything, can he? No, he's he's been off the ballot, ineligible. So there's there's two entities. There's Major League Baseball has distanced itself, and then yes. the Baseball Writers Association, right. which which controls the Hall of Fame ballot, they took him off. Whatever. 30, 35 years ago. Well, they either going to have to do something to Otani, or they're going to have to put him back because it's not fair. Yeah, and he it's, it's it's still being sorted out too, so we don't we don't know if he bet on baseball or not. Wow. If if he didn't, then it's just a guy that has a he's got a bookie that he sends some money to and he's whatever. Like it is what it is. But if he's betting on baseball, it opens up a really tough Pandora's box for the and, and Phil, I'll ask you because I'm sure you probably have a better idea than I do on this. If for some reason down the road baseball and Pete Rose make amends and he's now welcome back. Mm -hmm. is there that old school committee for the Hall of Fame that could go back and and then get him into the Hall of yeah. Fame? Or is he just totally off yeah. the books? No, they could put him. They have they have okay. committees. They've got the committee that looks at players from decades ago, okay. and they'll put somebody in, and they could do the same thing for, for Pete. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Have you ever met Pete Rose? I, I've never – I've I did order a cameo video for my father-in-law from oh, Pete Rose. Oh, that's very nice. And he did a great job with it, but I've never met him in person nicest guy you'd ever want maybe not the brightest man i've ever met but he's a very <laughs> nice guy actually what a talent that man was too god he yeah. was a great player we talk about three thousand hits right four thousand <laughs> hits for that guy oh jesus four thousand okay baby all right i thought it was a brilliant report that's we covered everything from professional wrestling to baseball to football we covered it all oh yeah snap into a slim gym yeah yeah, oh yeah. Remember, he used to do that all the time. I used to love drinking alcohol and watching professional wrestling. I still do, Tom. If you want to come over sometime, you're welcome to. I would love to do it. I'll be over. I'll bring my Pellegrino now, which will be different, but you know. All right, Pally, we will talk to you on Monday. All right, see you guys. Thanks a lot. Phil Mackey, ladies and gentlemen, score north. We'll take a break and be right back. So, what's it, this Hun Yuck's name again? It's Christ on a cross, or what is it? Chris, <laughs> that sounds Chris, right. Yeah, Chris, let's go with that. Crispian, is it, is it? Yeah, Prince Caspian from Narnia. Prince there, Raspian, yeah. Berditzman. Yes. We'll, be right, <laughs> we'll be right back. If you enjoy, it's going to be one of those days today, man. I'm in way too good a mood, and I don't even know why. Why am I in such a great mood? It's Friday. We're about to start the weekend. True. Life is good. Life yeah. is good. I like it. Have you enjoyed Minnesota's non-winter this year? Well, I shouldn't be reading that now because it's kind of the one week of winter. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, you want to enjoy the warmth whenever you want. Two Minnesotans can help you live that dream. Matt Carlson from Realty One Group Destination Key West. Well, Matt Carlson grew up in Litchfield, Minnesota. Started out uh, helping his friends find homes locally and in Florida and now can help you. If you've considered living in the warmth of Florida, now is the time to reach out to your new friend in realty, Matt Carlson. It's a buyer's market now, and your Minnesotan friend, Matt, can help you with a new home here or in the Florida Keys. And if you've never been there, you would love the Keys, man. And if you need some guidance with financing, Kristen Eklund from Coast Coast Mortgage can help. 
Kristen is Matt's preferred lender. Can finance anywhere in Florida, and like Matt is one of us, as she hails from the Sartell Alexandria area. So if you're looking at a new home in Minnesota, or maybe that second home or retirement place in Florida, trust your new local friends and contact Matt and Kristen. Visit OneKeyWest.com, that is OneKeyWest.com, or call Matt, 612-791-2345. 612-791-2345 and work with local professionals that you can trust. Is that text you're sending so important that you missed your turn? Is that text you're sending so important that you ran the red light? Is that text you're sending so important you didn't see the ball coming onto the road or the child that followed? Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. When you take your eyes off the road for even four seconds, your vehicle travels 100 yards. That's the entire length of a football field. If you absolutely have to text, you need to pull off the road somewhere safe and do it from there. Texting and driving is against the law and can cause serious injury or even death to you and others. Now that is important. We hope you're never injured in a collision, but if you are, please contact us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Going farther with my Bryant on your side. Seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw Bryant. Michael Bryant, ladies and gentlemen, got a message from him last night. One of his kids is, uh, had to hit the road. He, one thing I love about Michael Bryant is that when his kids leave, he hates that. And you can just tell he does not like it having his kids go away on him like that. But he's a good kid. When you go to a restaurant, you expect the chef to be an expert, don't you? You expect your auto mechanic to be an expert when it comes to fixing your car. You judge them both by the results of their work. Josh Arnold is an expert in investments and planning your financial future. Josh Arnold is my expert, and he should be yours, too. I talk to Josh every week, and he understands the market, the economy. He knows how to plan for your retirement. Don't put it off another day. The man with your plan is Josh Arnold. Call Josh now for a no-obligation 48-minute evaluation. You've got nothing to lose, and you'll have an expert planning and managing your financial future. Call Josh at 952-925-5608. That number again is 952-925-5608. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, Security Investment Advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk, of course. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Tommy B. is a paid endorser. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Channel 5's Chris Eggert is brought to you by Mr. Money Talk, Josh Arnold. Call Josh today for your free 48-minute evaluation at 952-925-5608. Uh, were you listening to the last segment? Uh, part of it, yeah. Um, did you hear us talking about Goldberg? Uh-uh. Good, because I want to run this by you. See, if this got nailed by AJ. I will tell you that. You know the professional wrestler Goldberg, right? Yeah. You remember him, don't you? Well, from way back in the day. I was working in Omaha at the time, I believe. There you go. Well, somebody you know is his cousin. And what led AJ to his choice was, you know the guy, his cousin, and he's the last guy on earth you would think would be Goldberg's cousin. So if you see Goldberg in your head, who would be the exact 180-degree opposite of Goldberg that's his cousin? Gelfan? Uh, how do you guys nail that so well? That's exactly well, you, right. You set it up so well. It just kind of, you know. Hey, I saw all three of you go, Jew, Jew. Oh, okay. I saw you doing that. that that's funny. I didn't even make that connection. I was just trying to think it's of. It's true. Huh. You guys all nailed it, I mean, right out of the box. I suppose, though, when you go, who is the least likely person you would think would be Goldberg's cousin? <laughs> but, yeah, Gelfand, he, he's, uh, I'm telling you, watch your step around him because he learned a lot from Goldberg. With the hey, he might put the- you in a, a pile driver or something. <laughs> One of my favorite references of all time, this, ladies and gentlemen, is over. He just put him in the figure four leg lock. The figure four leg lock? Really? I hey, love wrestling. I love that's it. That's deadly, man. You're down on the ground with that. You cannot escape. Well, it's not deadly, but you can't escape it. You, you can't, can't escape it. No, you are absolutely correct. You cannot get out of it. No question about it. But, God, I kind of miss wrestling. I used to, like I said, every Saturday night, we'd open up the old uh, refrigerator, get out the beer, and watch uh, professional wrestling at 6 o'clock on Saturday afternoon, evening, whatever. I mean, I it's, miss it. 
it's Love still it. wildly popular. I just think, yeah, I think everybody, in fact, um, there's a discussion about one of the big events coming to the Twin Cities here. They put a bid in for it. Um, yeah, AJ's excited about that. Um, <laughs> WrestleMania, baby. WrestleMania. Yeah, I just think, I think there's such a, people have such a nostalgic tie to the time when they were really into it. Um, like Tom, you think about the time when you were really into it, when you guys were drinking beer oh, at six God. o'clock, oh. you know, and I think about like Hulk Hogan and Jake, the snake Roberts yep. and, you know, uh, the British bulldogs and the iron Sheik and some of the guys from my era, uh, Tevin, AJ, what were the wrestling guys from your guys' era? Uh, I feel like it would be like the rock. Uh, I feel yeah. like there's a guy named the ass man that was very popular. What? Um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I was never big into wrestling, but those were like the two names. Hulk Hogan yeah. is kind of yeah. that general John Cena. Yeah. Yeah, like guys. John John Cena's been oh, like the sure. face since I was a child. And like Randy mm. Orton, and he's still doing it. And uh, you know, maybe like a like a Rey Mysterio type guy as well. Yep. His real name is Ass Man. Yeah, the only reason I remember that is because we were probably like <laughs> fifth grade and we were playing a wrestling video game and one of the guys' name was the ass man. We ran upstairs to ask my friend's <laughs> mom if it was okay that we if we were allowed to say ass while we played the game because it was the guy's name. She, and said, yes. she, she said it was okay? She said it was fine because it's his name. Oh, good. Don't call anybody else that. I want to look that up on my computer, but it's a work computer and I don't know yeah, what's going to yeah. pop oh, up yeah. if I look that up. So. <laughs> no question. Very quick reference here. My favorite of all together. Saturday night, six o'clock, All Star Wrestling, owned by Vern Gagne, Greg Gagne, his son. But the Crusher, are you guys old enough to remember the Crusher? I remember you talking about him. I think before he was a guy that invented talking like this. <laughs> Let me just tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Before Jesse was doing it, the Crusher was yes. doing it. But my favorite of all time, he comes out, and Marty O'Neill was the ring announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, you had a voice like this, so when Marty would interview you, he'd go, so how'd your night go so far? Well, it was phenomenal. <laughs> you had this voice here and then a voice yep, here. Yep. But one time, the Crusher walks out, and you know those, uh, they're about seven feet long, maybe about two and a half feet wide, and women lay in them, they put water in and lay them to tan. You know, it looked kind of like a long, so it's about this deep, maybe six inches yeah. deep. Yeah, yeah. Like You've seen those before, right? Yep. So he walks on stage, he's got one of those tanning beds under his left arm and a 28-ounce framing hammer in his right hand. And he comes out and Marty, you know, ah, Crusher, I've got to ask you a question, uh, unusual paraphernalia with you today. What's, uh, what's the idea of having the, uh, what is that? Is that a boat? Yeah, it's a boat. It's a great boat. It's the best boat I've ever had, as a matter of fact. Cost me a fortune. What are those things, about 10 bucks, maybe? Yeah. Well, what do you, what do you got it for? Crusher, what, what's it all about? He goes, well, here's what I'm going to do. There's a secret fishing hole on Lake Minnetonka that I only I know about. Nobody else knows about it. So I'm going to go out there. I'm going to put my boat here in the water. I'm going to get in, and I'm going to paddle my way out there, taking my 28-ounce framing hammer with me. So what I do is I get out there to my favorite fishing spot. I lean over the side. And I do a secret fish call, which only I know about. The big fish come to the top, and I hit him over the head with my framing hammer. And he just walks off stage. What? <laughs> I go, okay, what in the hell are you talking about? That is so random and hilarious. <laughs> I can, apparently, AJ didn't like it too much. He looks like he's going to fall asleep. But you know, No, sorry. I'm, I'm working with him. Tec technical stuff here. We're good. What the hell did you do now? Uh -oh. Just you know, no, I'm just mic levels. We're all, we're all set. What Let would just, make him? Oh, what would inspire him to talk about the lake and go out and hitting him with a hammer? He That's so that. weird. He used to do that all the time. <laughs> Honestly, God, it, it's just he was a great guy too. He and Crusher and the Bruiser, his cousin apparently is supposed to be his cousin. Yeah, those guys. They all for the, the only guy that you didn't, the guy you did not want to mess with was uh, Nick Bockwinkle. I because I said. I met him. We all did an appearance together at Parade Stadium many, many, many years ago. We were all appearing yep. there to promote something. And I come over and I said, uh, Mr. Bockwinkle, how are you doing? He goes, I'm doing fine, thank you. And I said, oh, I'm glad to hear that. You kind of fired up to get out there and put on a performance. He goes, what do you mean? I said, well, we're going to go out there and cheer people up. He goes, I don't do performances. I said, what do, you, what do you mean you don't do performances? He goes, this is me. This is my real being. This is me. 
I'm not going to change for you and walks away. It's like, okay, well, all right, Nick, uh, calm down. Everything will be good. I guess he's stuck to the bit, huh? <laughs> I guess he's stuck to the bit, man. He didn't want to hear about it. that. That was a great era in my life. Knowing all those professional wrestlers. Oh my God. That's cool. I bet that was really cool. One of the great things was to be on their side when a bar fight broke out. That was really good to be on their side. That's all I know. Yep. Go start I, something and then go get behind no, the crusher. And, no, yeah. I did not do that. <laughs> You're mean to me. Yeah. Also, in a bar fight, there should be no other side to be on than the one with the big. <laughs> yeah, that's a great. That's a great point, Tevin. Great point. Oh, you'd be surprised, though. I have seen guys walk in bars and walk over and like pinch their wife's butt or something like you're going to die what do you what the hell is wrong with you yeah. i've seen it happen i just it's un, you can't believe it some people just like to scrap i guess they do that i like to be picked up by one hand and held up against the wall and go piss your pants or i'm gonna kill you <laughs> <laughs> i just gotta be like what and you'd be up there in any case what else is in the news this morning mr Eggert? Uh, it's going to be a big snow. It's going to, uh, I, I heard Barlow mumble between six to 12 inches on uh, Sunday what? now. So. What? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I think they're starting, it's starting to get a little more focus and uh, yeah. they're, they're thinking it's going to be a big one. So that's going to be mainly a Saturday night, Sunday into Monday deal. So it's going to go on for, you know, I guess the good news is it's on a Sunday, but that Monday morning commute is going to be uh, probably not very fantastic. Kind of seems like it. I don't think there's any question about God. What'd you say? Six to 10 inches? Six to 12 is what? Six to 12. I think oh is official God. yet. He's still at, he's, I think he's still at oh. six, but I, I heard him say he wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised if that was the range. It's kind of a tough row to hold there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna baby. get in my I'm gonna get in my uh, plastic p uh, baby pool and swim out to Lake Minnetonka <laughs> and hit some fish with hammers. Going over to Theater Worth and I'm gonna skate down the hill. It's gonna be unbelievable. <laughs> God, I miss that so much. It was so much fun. Ah, what the hell? All right. Well, you have a magnificent weekend, sir. As always, a magnificent performance. Yeah, you guys too. Happy birthday, Tevin. Oh, thank you, Chris. Yesterday thank was your birthday, wasn't it? Yeah, yesterday was. You know, I get old, man. I found that last night that it was a happy birthday to you. I saw last night that it was your birthday yesterday. Thank yep. you. Sorry I missed it, Tevin. I saw uh, Michael Bryant wished you happy birthday on Facebook this morning. And I'm like, ah, I didn't know. Yes, it was yesterday. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. Which is Enjoy. My, my, Michael Bryant knows that kind of stuff. All right, Chris. Take it easy. Bye. Yep. Chris Eggert, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Channel 5's Chris Eggert. Yeah, Michael Bryant knows everybody's birthday and what's happening. He knows what the day is all about. It always does. Always has, too. Yeah, he's definitely a planner. He wakes yeah. up yes. on purpose, and he, yeah, he he's does. he's with it. Indeed, ladies and gentlemen, Channel 5's Chris Eggert brought to you by Mr. Money Talk, Josh Arnold. Call Josh today for your free 48-minute evaluation at 952-925-5608. We got some, what, some Italian guy or something is on the show today. Is that correct? Again? I yeah. Like that's what I, I heard. I heard he's on his way again to get more pets neutered. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Barker, <laughs> coming up. <laughs> yes, there you go. Get your dogs neutered and spayed. <laughs> like, once you settle down, we, uh, yeah, okay, so uh, we got to take a break and then come back, don't we? Yep. Yes. I cannot believe this. I, I, the only reason I said that is I looked up and I'm like, this show's half over already, for Christ's sake. Flying by. It's, I'm, I'm having a fun Friday so far. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, it's, a, it, it's a nice setup, except for when Bob comes on next, it's going to suck. Don't you think? <laughs> we, yeah. We'll get through it. We somehow always do. <laughs> I'll, I'll Annie, hold. I'll hold my opinion till after the second. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's, I think it's a great plan. It's a very, very smart plan. Mike Lindell and my pillow employees want to thank my listeners for all your continued support. I want to thank you too. To thank you, they're having an overstock clearance and new product sale right now for the best prices ever when you use promo code TOM and you get free shipping on your entire order. Get 50% off the MyPillow 2.0. Also get 50% off the brand new flannel sheets that just arrived and won't last long. Six pack towel sets for only $29.98. And take advantage of the free shipping on larger items such as mattresses and mattress toppers. 100% made in the USA. On sale for as low as $99.99. Everything is on sale from the brand new kitchen towels that have the same technology as the bath towels that actually absorb. 
dog beds, blankets, couch pillows, and so much more. To get the best specials ever, go to MyPillow.com or call 800-516-5146. Use promo code TOM and you get free shipping on your entire order. So call 800-516-5146 or go to MyPillow.com and use promo code TOM. Hi guys, it's Chris Eggert from Channel 5 Morning News, along with my friends Megan Newquist and Ken Barlow. In the morning, we pride ourselves on sharing people's stories. I've been lucky enough to be part of this 5 Eyewitness News morning team for more than a decade now. This is where I've raised my kids and working alongside my friends for all these years. We're like a family too. We are family, Chris. Working with you and Ken and Anna, it is such an honor to help folks start their day every morning on Channel 5. We get to catch people up on the news that's happening, and Hannah is here to keep an eye on the traffic around town. And when it comes to weather, I know people rely on me to plan their day and get their family out the door. Over the last 10 years, there were so many memories and so many laughs. I just love sharing the forecast alongside you guys. I feel the same way, Ken. To all you who start your day with us here on Channel 5, we think of you as family too. Thanks for turning on 5 Eyewitness News in the mornings. I'd like to turn on 5 Eyewitness News. Get it? Turn on? Thank you. Let's take a second to talk about my bank, North American Banking Company. You've heard me talking about them for a long time now, Bill Ski. When they opened in 1998, they made a promise to deliver a better banking experience for their customers where you know your banker and they know you. While a lot has changed since 1998, this commitment to being a true community bank of the Twin Cities has not. So if you're looking for a better banking experience, why not bank with my bankers at North American Banking Company? Go to nabanco.com or stop by any one of their six Twin Cities locations. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. Sanny now, jo- look at him, under understated clothing. You don't have any, well, you got a logo on your hat. See? What is that? BS show. Oh, it says BS. Oh, yeah, I see it now. There you go. Yeah, the light wasn't on it directly. Tip so of the cap to you. BS, does that stand for Bob Sansevier by any coincidence? Well, it could stand for that. could stand for bullshit. It could stand for anything but I with suppose a B and an true. S. I don't think there's you any know? question. Sanny, what is the latest with you? Well, before I get to that, I want to be the first 364 days early to wish Tevin a happy birthday for 2025. There you go. go. So remember that. I was the first. I missed the last one, but I was the first on this one. It all works out in the end. There's no Why didn't you tell Tom yesterday was your birthday? I'm not a cake. I'm not a big birthday person. It's just another day. Like I'll skate through. I think I told like two people just because they happen to ask. But yeah, he says that. But his Instagram post said, "Oh, I did." Well, because Happy National Tevin Day. That is true. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I don't care about it, AJ. I don't care about my birthday. Join me now. (laughs) But only, only because I've I have things I'm doing this weekend that I need people to show up to so oh, yeah okay oh, so is it okay. tevin birthday weekend birthday week or week or birthday month do you blow out the whole month for your birthday i mean i guess technically i'll do a weekend but not i'm not, I'm not a month person so we'll do a weekend i'll wear the sash maybe put a tear on this is like princess or something and yeah, we'll call it a day <laughs> okay T- what was that that's a that's my freaking phone. Somebody sending texts here. I'll take care of it. Yeah, typical. Hey, at that least was I me admit yesterday. it. Yesterday, I should have said yesterday. Oh, geez, what was that? Which <laughs> some people will do to you. Geez, I don't know what that sound is. What? Well, that thing would just went. Mine doesn't do that. What does yours do? Hey, Tom. Does it goes like that? Um, I want to run something by you. Unless you've been listening to the show this morning at all. Uh, I just heard the very end of Edgar talking about getting a million inches of snow. Okay, that's all you heard. Okay, 6 to 12 inches. So now you will be the final because everyone's gotten this right so far. Uh-oh. And maybe you already know this anyway. Probably not. But you know the wrestler Goldberg, right? Yeah, I'm familiar with him. Okay. Do you know who his cousin is? Because you know his cousin. I don't. You don't know who it is. Well, I'm not sure who it is. Oh no! Wait, wait. Okay, Tom. I this is. I know it's going to sound like it's a cop out, but I now that you say it, I remember this, but I don't remember who it is. But I do know that this is taking you off a little. Was it Diamond Dallas or Dallas Diamond Page? Who you know? 
covered him, him in yeah. I covered him in high school. He was Paige Falkenberg, a terrific basketball player, very lean go. at the time. But but who is Goldberg's, who is Goldberg's cousin? cousin? The least likely person you would think would ever be Goldberg's cousin, and you know him. Uh, did I work with him? Yes, you did. Was it somebody named Tony? No, it wasn't it? Wasn't Tony? It was not Tony. I thought it might have been him. Now, who could it have been? Even less likely to be his cousin would be the real. <laughs> well, that would guy. be Gelfand. You got it. <laughs> Very good. Everybody I knew. Just okay, I this. knew there was someone that I worked with. <laughs> well, you know, I see the resemblance. <laughs> Oh yeah, they look exactly. The I, no, same. no, no. I think when he, whenever he got in the ring, didn't he point his middle finger at somebody? Yes. I'm glad he's going to take him down. That's a Gelfand thing. Oh, Gelfand. Let me make a point. <laughs> no, you could do this when you let me. This see, this is let me make a point. This is not let me make a point. He's always done that. He's all for some reason he does think that's how you make a point. You don't go ask not what your country can do for you. He uses his middle finger for some reason, and I don't he, know why. Well, because he's a trailblazer. He doesn't conform. He's a trailblazer. So okay, how, who, how's Goldberg what? come up today? Something happened to him? How did it come up today? I, I, for some reason, Phil brought something up. Phil Mackey brought up something, but I can't remember what it was. So, how did it happen? Phil, you guys remember? Phil, Phil was telling a story about how he was a ring announcer for oh, a, right. like a send-off oh, okay. event, um, mm. like a decade ago, and then that kind of branched off into wrestling talk. There you have it. It's been a hell of a show, Bob, so far, so don't ruin it. Well, it's I'm, I'm sure I will. I heard them saying it's been the greatest show you've ever had, and I, I can't live up to that. It's getting pretty difficult, I'll tell you. Well, I got no neuter stories. I got nothing. Bob, are you fired up about uh, baseball season and open up in just a few days? Yeah, I mean, okay, you got to explain this to me. And I know that they do it every year. They yeah. open next Thursday against the Royals. Mm-hmm. Why in baseball do they always take off Friday? Before they know. play against Saturday. It's absurd. Play the no damn sense. games. Oh, let's, we have to decompress. Get ready for game two <laughs> of the season. It's only 161 to go, man. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah they I got know. that. I mean, uh, good for that. They, and it, uh, they'll know, uh, have a good idea after the Royals. And they got uh, a couple of games with um, with Milwaukee. And then they have the Guardians for the home opener the follow a week. Uh, well, a week from the opener at mm-hmm. Uh, you know, at Target Field, but playing Kansas City, which should be they, that, should be an easy one. But they knock both of them, the Guardians, off. They'll know that they're in pretty good shape because that's a yeah. bad division. Do you think? Because they've, they've had a terrible preseason, uh, spring training. Um, what they're better it's, than that, aren't to they? To me, Bob? it's less of the spring training right. is like an exhibition football season when right. you're not playing. The it, it's not. You're not sticking with the pitchers. You're you're going to be sticking right. with more. I mean, you're putting a lot of hitters in. Yeah, I don't. I, I would not be. I tell you what, I'd be worried if I mentioned. You know, I mentioned the Royals. I mentioned the Brewers, and then the Guardians. If they're in bad shape and have a losing record after those series are played, then I'd start to worry a little bit because that means you've yeah. seen the rotation, and you know their their hitters just aren't getting it done. I understand completely. I, so I should be fired up for the twin season. Is that what yeah, you're telling I, me? Yeah, did, don't, right. don't worry right. about the exhibition season in this case. I wouldn't worry about that at all. But they've been getting killed. They don't just lose. They get yeah. slaughtered like 12 to 3. But, again, Man. these are, some of these guys are not going to be part of the team. Right. And their bullpen, I mean, they, they're they supposed to have a really good bullpen, and they have several, or, you know, you know that their, their ace is going to be good. And they got other good pitchers. I wouldn't worry about. Don't worry yet. Give it two weeks, then worry. Well, I can't if, really turn on them either, Bob, because you know, growing up a Catholic boy, my two favorite managers of all time were Tom Kelly, an Irishman, yeah, and Baldelli, an Italian. I mean, I got to go well, with the you, I, I, Irish and Italian guys. I, and Garden Hire just squeezed in between. Well, there was another one too, boring. Molitor. But I mean, they're, they're, I, I always liked it. I liked both of those guys. I mean, there's not a manager they've had I didn't like. No, that's true. I would agree with you on that one. Ray Miller. No question. Ray Miller. God, that's those are the days, man. That was a long time ago. He Ray was a Miller. Bit, yeah, he was cantankerous. Mm-hmm. He was so, indeed. I mean, Kelly could be too, but I liked him. Oh, God. I remember one time I was listening to Sid on CCO doing the Tom. I do the Tom <laughs> Kelly show. Here he is, Tom Kelly. I just love when Sid would go, 
Tom Kelly. It's like take him about an hour to say somebody's name. Well, at least he could say that one. Do you, I know you guys have the tape of Martina Navratilova. <laughs> Martina Navratilova. God damn it. <laughs> <That's exactly laughs> right. He tried like 15 times and couldn't get it out. <laughs> we should play that at some point, AJ, if you can ever find it. I think you played it before. It's good, it's good stuff. We Didn't have. he tell them to like delete, don't be recording this or something? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And now the world has it. <laughs> Got to be honest with you, Bob. I miss the hell out of it. Here's today's sports hero, Martina Navratilova. She won the slim... Ah, oh, crap. Once more time. <laughs> Here's today's sports hero, Martina Navratilova. <laughs> Here's today's sports hero, Martina Navratilova. I know how to pronounce it, and I'm screwing it up. Go all the way back there, Larry. Don't be saving that crap. <laughs> <laughs> Here is today's sports hero, Martina Navarro. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Here is today's sports hero, Martina Navarro. Winner of the Slim. <laughs> winner of the Slim. <laughs> Here is today's sports hero, Martina Navarro. No. Damn, I keep on. I know how to say it, and I keep on. Here's today's sports hero, Martina Nav. Here's today's sports hero, Martina Nav. So close. Here's today's sports hero. <clears throat> <Damn>. <laughs> you know, his first one. one was the closest. It was. And then, yeah. I had never heard this before, but he says... Let's do it once more time. Once more time. Yep. He did, yeah. I missed the hell out of Sydney. I used to go to the Lincoln Dell with him on Highway 12, which is now 394. But Sid and I would sit there for hours. And, I mean, we'd have other people come in and join the, you know, guys from, like, Kiss would come and have lunch with us. It's like, what the hell? But, but I, would, I only bring that up because of Sid was a dear friend. I love Sid. And his son, Chad, is a dear friend as well. No two people could be further apart than Chad Hartman and Sid Hartman. They loved one another, but they were nothing alike. No, I never saw them agree on anything. <laughs> never. They never agreed on one thing. Ah, what the hell. It all works out, Sandy. So what else you got, Pally? Well, I mean, it's a workout today with the Vikings, their brass, mm -hmm. Quasi Adolfo Mensa, and you probably know all this already, but uh, and O'Connell are going to see J.J. McCarthy. And there's a lot of people – I. I am not overreading the fact that Drake May's high school quarterback was Josh McCown, the Vikings quarterbacks mm -hmm. coach. Right. To me, the guy to go after is McCarthy. And I'm going to give you a stat that a friend of mine from Sports Illustrated shared with me. Now, I do believe, and I think I've said this before, if J.J. McCarthy was in a passing offense, he would be right up there. Right, Caleb Williams and him would be what everyone's talking about. Right. His completion percentage was 72%. In the pocket, his completion percentage on play action rollouts to the right and left was 71%. Oh. What more do you need to know if you want a pro caliber quarterback played yeah. for a pro coach? And that, I mean, to do that, on because you're going to be, he is not going to have a clean pocket. He's going to have to be on the move. Yeah, and, that's very true. Yeah. And think of the receivers that he has. The margin of error will be even smaller because they will make catches for him. I don't know. I'm, I'm looking forward to the season. That's, you know, I'm looking forward to the Vikings, looking forward to the Twins. Got our Twins coming up in less than a week. I'm pretty fired up, Bob. I hope they're better than they looked. Yeah, they'll both disappoint you in the end. You know that. <laughs> in the end, it'll, except in 89 and, or excuse me, 87, 87. and 91. Yeah. 87 and 91. Do the math on that. I mean, 91. My God, how could, how could it be 33 years already? Oh. But, you know, see, Bob, that's proof to me that there is a God, because I had been out of radio for years, got back into radio on February, I think it was 17th of 1986, and one year later, I'm talking about a world champion Twins team, and I love the Twins. I mean, how fortunate for my career was that? And what did you, what, what was the thing you were pushing, the the, uh, the squirrel monkey? Squirrel monkey, that was yeah. that was 91, though, I think, wasn't it? Uh, no, I think it was, no, 87. it was 87. You're right. It was 87. Because I was on the morning show in 91. I was not in 87. I remember that the squirrel monkey thing. And you know, the woman who works over at Hubbard now, one of my she, favorite women in the world. She was the squirrel or, or is the squirrel monkey. Squirrel Rachel. bite. 
Squirrel bite. That's a right. squirrel bitter on the foot. <laughs> I suppose it wasn't funny when it happened, but you know. How does that happen to anyone? A squirrel bites you, you on the foot. You put peanuts on your toes? Or you guys know who that AJ? Do you know who that is that got bitten? The squirrel bite? You know who that is? No, I have no clue. She works in the Hubbard building. Very nice person. She's just a sweetheart of a person. There's no question about it. Uh, but think about it, and we'll do the same, the same thing with Goldberg and Gelfand. Think about who the squirrel a squirrel bite is at Hubbard, right? Have you had her on? Because, I mean, she could certainly come on the Not show. On this, oh, we should definitely have her on the show to talk about her squirrel bite. There's Schedule no it when I'm on. I'd, I haven't seen her in years. I'd love to see how it's things awesome. are going Great. for the bite. Great person. Very, yeah. very sweet person. Unlike Bob Sansevier, who's not sweet at all, so we're kicking him off the show right, right. now. But I got to, okay, I got to ask all of you. Now, Tom, I know you don't do them, but did you, uh, you two guys do the NCAA bracket? Yes. No, this is the first year that I have not. I haven't watched it. Really? Anything, so. all, right. all right. Now, AJ, did you do what Mike Bryant did? Pick Kentucky to win it all? Oh, oh. Mike Bryant. Kentucky, <laughs> Kentucky <laughs> upset by Oakland. And by the way, do, do any of you know where Oakland University is located? No. It's in Oakland, Mi- California. It's in nope. Michigan. Good for you. Auburn Oakland, Hills. Oh, wow. Auburn Hills, yeah. Yes. It, it originally was the uh, – University of Michigan, there's like University of Wisconsin Stout or University mm, of Minnesota gosh, gosh, or something something like that. Yeah. University of Michigan, Oakland, which not even in Oakland. And then it just branched off and it's just Oakland now. What's great about this team, Tom, <laughs> the coach, he began coaching in 1984 at Oakland. Holy Hannah. This is the first time they've won an NCAA game. He's only been to it like four times, but – He's kept his job for 40 years, so I don't think foot basketball is a big emphasis at Oakland University <laughs> for a guy right. who's won one NCAA tournament game to still be the coach. Other than that, though, everything's going well. Good isn't for it? him, though. That's a great story. Mm-hmm. I have a closing question. Yeah. Oakland has nothing left, do they? The Oakland, California. There's nothing there anymore, is there? Crime. Crime. <laughs> they've, about- they, they've got the A's for a little while. Oh, I thought they moved already. No, no, there's talks. The the Oakland, A's are still based in Oakland. And and Tom, okay, it sounds like a cliche, but of all the cities I've ever gone to for a game, it is the biggest crap hole of American <laughs> sports cities. Yeah. And yeah. my it's like it remind it's okay, it's not as bad, but it reminded me of going to Camden, New Jersey, where you oh, yeah. cross into Camden yep. and everything becomes like it's black and white, like watching the Munsters, you know, yes. where you see that. That's what it was like, like the, the opening scene of their mansion house with the dead trees. Yep. That is what Camden and Oakland are like. It's just uh, it, yeah, it, pretty much. Yeah. Oakland Hills is nice, though. There are some nice areas up in Oakland Hills, but Oakland itself, not so great. I don't recall being in Oakland Hills. I did. I did visit. um J.R. Ryder, remember the guy who yeah, wouldn't sure. say he wouldn't watch it until flames or sparks came out his ass, yep. something like that. I but I, I, I went to interview him at his parents or his mom's place in Oakland, and that was a really nice part of Oakland. But he was like two hours late to the meeting, and like he did here, he always had an excuse for of why course. he was late to something. But anyway, of course, I digress. All right, Sandy, we will talk to you on Monday, as always. I live for that. Thanks, we'll see Bob Sansfield, ladies and gentlemen. Take a break. Be right back. Timmy Lammers joins us right after this. Bart's means it's springtime, and that means spring cleaning and your carpets and air ducts are the first item on my list. Your carpet and ducts are your biggest air filters in your home, and you could be breathing in nasty dust, dandruff, and bacteria. Zero Res's platinum-rated cleaning systems and environmentally friendly ZR water to the rescue with these limited-time offers. Three rooms of carpet clean starting at just $129 off $40 savings, $75 off air duct cleaning, and 20% off all upholstery cleaning. Zero Res has over 17,000 reviews with an average 4 Point nine star rating, so their gotta love it guarantee ensures your spring cleaning will leave your home looking and smelling how it should. Call 952 Z E R O R E Z or visit zeroresminnesota.com to schedule your spring cleaning offer today and be sure to ask for the Tom Bernard special. Zero res, spell it forward or backward. It spells the same. Schedule your appointment today and beat the spring cleaning rush. The past several years have been the craziest in the history of the car business. The pandemic, supply chain and chip issues, all causing extreme inventory shortages that led to, well, predatory pricing. 
Some dealers charge thousands of dollars over MSRP. We never played that game. I'm Jim Paul of Alley Buick GMC. We knew that would leave a bad taste in a customer's mouth. More importantly, from an integrity standpoint, it was just wrong. So what about the current market? You know, inventory and pricing. Valley has their best inventory in years. Really all the Buick and GMC models. Even the previously hard to find Yukons, HD pickups, and Hummer EVs. Plenty of deep discounts. Many with factory rebates and low interest financing. Then it's a good time to buy? It's a great time. We're welcoming our previous customers back as well as anyone else that felt the treatment just didn't feel right the last time somewhere else. Valley Buick GMC. MC in Apple Valley and Hastings or ValleyCarDealers.com. Car buying without the bad aftertaste. When you go to a restaurant, you expect the chef to be an expert. You expect your auto mechanic to be an expert when it comes to fixing your car. You judge them both by the results of their work. Josh Arnold is an expert in investments and planning your financial future. Josh Arnold is my expert, and he should be yours, too. I talk to Josh every week, and he understands the market and the economy, and he knows how to plan for your retirement. Don't put it off another day. The man with your plan is Josh Arnold. Call Josh now for a no-obligation, 48-minute evaluation. You've got nothing to lose, and you'll have an expert planning and managing your financial future. Call Josh at 952-925-5608. That's 952-925-5608. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC Security Investment Advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Tom Bernard is a paid endorser. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Yes, it is, ladies and gentlemen. Tim Lammers brought to you by Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury lawyers seeking justice for the injured. Contact Bradshaw and Bryant at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. That's minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Timmy. Hey, Tommy. AJ, Tevin, how are you guys? Good. 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 Hey, before we start, I have a burning question for Kristen. So I'm wondering if it's already a hangout for the beginning of her segment, at least. I'll, I got ask her the question and I'll keep quiet, but there's... A new streaming show this week that is just, oh, my God. <laughs> but I'll ask her about it, and then she can talk about it. It's pretty amazing. All right. uh, I'm here for movies today. Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire. Just in time for the snow in Minnesota, baby. 10, 12 inches, maybe. It is a frozen empire. The state of hockey. Who's never won a Stanley Cup? <laughs> um, well, true. Apart from that, apart from that. Yeah, you know what? Look, I, I'm going to be honest with you. Those, those Ghostbusters films, I wasn't begging for a sequel like everybody right, else was. Right. You know, they were entertaining. They were in the 80s, whatever. You know, they were good. Um, but I have to say, when Ghostbusters Afterlife came out in 2021, I thought, you know what? This is a great way to reboot the series by introducing Egon Spengler's family, his daughter, his right. granddaughter, who really led the way to becoming, you know, leading the new Ghostbusters team. And then you have Paul Rudd on top of it, man. I mean, he is so damn funny and everything he's in perfect casting for that. So that played out. They had a, a sensible way of bringing in the quote unquote ghost of Harold Ramis to kind of wrap up that storyline. Uh, really moving, In fact, yeah. very moving. Um, but they also got back Bill Murray and they got back Ernie Hudson and Annie Potts, you know, all those original folks from those original films. And then uh, that took place in Oklahoma. This one actually moves forward to the big city in New York city, to that firehouse where the ghostbusters used to station back in those original films where the Spangler family and Gary Gruberson, played by Paul Rudd, take over. Um, here, they're dealing with this mysterious artifact, this orb, which contains this malevolent spirit, which, if it gets Ooh. loose, has the ability to, with its fingertips, turn everything to ice. It doesn't breathe fire. It breathes ice. And uh, it's basically threatening a new ice age if they don't do something about it. So, like... The other film, The uh, um, Afterlife, Frozen Empire, has Bill Murray, uh, Ernie Hudson, Annie Potts, Dan Aykroyd. I should have mentioned Dan Aykroyd came back for that uh, um, Afterlife as well. So they're all back. And they're great supporting roles, you know. They tried to reboot this thing uh, with the all-female cast that didn't go anywhere. And there it was kind of like reduced to cameos where Dan Aykroyd played like a 
taxi driver or something, you know, it was really meaningless, but now everything is meaningful again. So I really like the way that they're moving this franchise forward. Visual effects are great. It isn't breaking the bank. I think the film is budgeted as a, at a hundred million bucks, which is a bargain these days. A hundred million dollars. A <laughs> hundred million, Jesus. as opposed to your Marvel pictures that are, you know, 200 million or more. So, mm -hmm. you know, they, they kept everything tight here. Um, Jason Reitman, who directed the last picture because Ivan directed the originals. Now, Ivan passed away after producing Afterlife, so they have a tribute for him here. Uh, but the spirit is there. Everything is there. If you love the movie, uh, the movies before this, I think you'll love this. It It's weird. It There are way too many characters to try to fit into one film. I will say that. And at less than two hours long, it still kind of feels over long. But you know what? I still enjoyed it. So I'll definitely see Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Ghostbusters. I never cared for those movies. Well, you know, again, I... I really didn't either. And no. I don't know the way they brought this one back. It was, I was really engaged by it. I thought, okay, you know, maybe, maybe the reason was for afterlife and is, or continues for frozen empires, because again, I wasn't begging for these sequels. Yeah. So I kind of look at them as fresh new things, you know? So yeah, I, I, I really like him a lot. I, and I oh, think cool. maybe a large part of that is Paul Rudd and, and the idea yeah. of bringing this younger cast in these kids. There are a couple kids uh, from uh, the original, or excuse me, from Afterlife that come back. And uh, you got new characters like Kumail Nanjiani is really, really funny in this. Patton Oswalt is in this. He's really funny. So it's, it's a good movie. It's a lot of fun. Marvel. No, I didn't hate them or anything. I, I just thought they were yeah, okay. They I, were I okay. agree. Yeah. I agree. I, I just thought, what's the big deal? Right. You know, I guess that's... Look, I love everybody. I love Aykroyd and, and, yep. and Murray yep. and Harold Ramis. I mean, they're all terrific. I mean, you know, they, they, they were enjoyable enough, but again, I, I probably the first and last time I watched them, I, I guess probably I did on DVD, because my kids really liked them. You know, but I, I just think that this these new ones I, I really, really like a lot. Um, also, I mentioned this on Tuesday on the family podcast, but Late Night with the Devil with David Dasmelchin. Great oh, actor. You've great had him guy. as a guest on the yep. show. Great guy, a buddy of mine for the last 10 years or so. Fortunate enough to get to know him before his star started to rise. So <laughs> it's, it's pretty crazy, man. I mean, it's, you know, he's a phone call away now. And so I talked with him for Forbes for uh, this film, uh, which you can get on directconversations.com. But it is, I described the film to him and he agreed. It's, uh, it's, it takes place during a late night TV show in the 70s. So it's Johnny Carson meets Jerry Springer meets The Exorcist. Yeah. Oh, All well. You need to know, baby. Okay. Yeah, so it's it's a crazy horror movie. It's a terrific horror movie, and it's getting a lot of positive feedback from uh, those pesky critics. So that's always a good thing. So. Pesky critics, ladies and gentlemen. We have to take a break and come right back with Timmy and KB2. Is she KB2 or 3? I can never remember. I think uh, it's two. KB2. KB2. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We'll be right back with TL1 and KB2 right after this. Have you enjoyed Minnesota's non-winter this year? Want to enjoy the warmth whenever you want? Two Minnesotans can help you live that dream. Matt Carlson from Realty One Group Destination Key West grew up in Litchfield, Minnesota. Started out helping his friends find homes locally and in Florida. And now he can help you. If you've considered living in the warmth of Florida, now is the time to reach out to your new friend in Realty, Matt Carlson. It's a buyer's market now and your Minnesotan friend Matt can help you with a new home here or in the Florida Keys. And if you need some guidance with financing, Kristen Eklund from Coast to Coast Mortgage can help. Kristen is Matt's preferred lender, can finance anywhere in Florida, and like Matt, is one of us, as she hails from the Sartell, Alexandria area. So if you're looking at a new home in Minnesota, or maybe that second home or retirement place in Florida, trust your new local friends, contact Matt and Kristen. Visit OneKeyWest.com. That's OneKeyWest.com, or call Matt at 612 791 Two three four five six one two seven nine one two three four five, and work with local professionals you can trust. 
Is that text you're sending so important that you missed your turn? Is that text you're sending so important that you ran the red light? Is that text you're sending so important you didn't see the ball coming onto the road or the child that followed? Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. When you take your eyes off the road for even four seconds, your vehicle travels 100 yards. That's the entire length of a football field. If you absolutely have to text, you need to pull off the road somewhere safe and do it from there. Texting and driving is against the law and can cause serious injury or even death to you and others. Now that is important. We hope you're never injured in a collision, but if you are, please contact us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Going farther with my Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. The new Tom Bernard Show is proud to have partners like Bradshaw and Bryant, MyPillow, and North American Banking Company founder, chairman, and president, Mike Bilski. I've advertised on Tom's show for years, and the reason is simple. My business is recognized because of the ads, and that recognition has created growth. What business doesn't want to grow? I highly recommend the Tom Bernard Morning Show for your advertising. Grow results for your business by partnering with the Tom Bernard Show. Visit TomBernardShow.com keyword partner. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. You certainly are, ladies and gentlemen, and now the great combo of Tim Lammers and Kristen Bird Entertainment News brought to you by North American Banking Company. Go to NABanco.com to learn more. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. So we have TL1 and KB2 schmoozing. Yes. Kristen, I asked to hang out because I am dying to know with the release on streaming, and I'm sure you've talked with Tom about this already, uh, Quiet on the Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV. I watched all four episodes in one night. Unbelievable. And if you want to get your kids into stuff in Hollywood, you need to have your head examined. (laughs) <laughs> honest to god has this shaken the foundation of the industry I, this week i have two thoughts on this first of all uh I, where was sag after i know some of these shows and, and nickelodeon was famous for doing non-union shows so that's yeah. why some of this fell through the cracks however some of these shows were union and i have not heard a peep from sag after whatsoever and that as a member myself a little frustrating um, Nickelodeon's statement was really kind of weak too. And I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing a few civil lawsuits coming down the pike. Um, but the other thing, and we talked about this earlier this week, this is for every parent, not the ones that just want to get their kids into Hollywood because you hear about the grooming and how the parents were groomed and how the kids were groomed. Mm -hmm. This is for every kid that has sports, whether it's on an elite level, whether it's on a recreational level, theater, anything where they're spending a lot of time with adults or a certain coach or an instructor, because this happens everywhere. It does. But the interesting thing about this is the parents are allowed to be with their kids on set. And then somehow, you're right, these groomers, they make them feel like, Oh, he's a nice guy and everything like that. And before too long, it's like they're going off with these groomers and all that sort of stuff. Which it's very uh, disturbing. By the way, the, the and I know you've mentioned it already. It's streaming on Max and Discovery Plus. So that's where you can see it. Four episodes. Plus, I have to note that a uh, Minnesota guy, Rick Ellis, is interviewed quite often in the thing from All Your Screens TV. I'm a friend of mine from years back. So, yeah, yeah. Wow, what a compelling show this is. And when you talk about the parents, I just want to mention this because people always go, well, where were the parents? What was happening besides the grooming? And I'm going to point this out in the USA Gymnastics case. The parents were in the room oftentimes with the examination with Dr. Larry Nassar, and it was happening right in front of their eyes. And so this is my point. These people are so skilled at what they do in terms of grooming the parents, fooling you, like bringing you into their web. This is why you have to really know who your kids are around. And, you know, my mom was a stay at home mom. So I was really lucky in that point. But I was always annoyed, like at around like 11, 12, 13. I'm like, why is she the one doing my quick changes behind the scenes at my dance shows and things like that? Now I thank God every day for that because she was able to to be there for me and be the field trip mom and everything else Mm -hmm. and keep that careful eye. And you know what? I don't think most parents are in that situation. It has to be a two income 
um, household, it's really tough. So, you know, make sure your village is as safe as possible. My God, what is with, who's this guy yesterday, both, I'm asking actually all four of you and the listeners. I think he was an executive at NBC or something. What a creep. Baron Trump is no fair game. Did you see that guy? I heard about yeah. it. I, I didn't. Yeah, I don't think it was oh. an NBC. I, I think, yeah. But what no matter it? what, I don't think he was an NBC exec, but somebody else said it. But the point is, I don't think any children of the president, I don't care who they are, should yep. be left alone. Um, if they choose to step into the public eye, a la Jenna um, Bush Hager, you know, that's one thing because she's on TV every single morning on the Today Show. Right. But everybody else, they did not ask for this. They did not ask for their dad to be president. But I just don't understand. He, the guy was so creepy about it, though. What, what was his name? You guys know what I'm think, talking about? Yeah, it looks like it was uh, former NBC senior executive yeah. Mike Sington said yes, that Mike yeah, Sington. now that he's turned 18, he is fair game, quote unquote. NBC, former NBC, Kristen Burt. See, <laughs> I know, but I believe he is like, what does he do now? What is this? Because he is like always inflammatory on Twitter. So that's yes, why. That's what I've heard. Yeah. And it looks like he tweeted it out. That's where. What a creep. Does it say what he does now? Because I thought that he was of the same party as Mr. Trump. Oh, I don't think so. Oh, you, uh, you want yeah, to think, maybe I look would at say, this. no, you got to watch out because there are two factions in the, the Republican no, no, Party like care. there are in the Democrat Party. That I some people I, do not like Mr. Trump. I am not a Republican nor a Democrat, so I don't give a rat's ass what he is. But that guy was, I don't, well, okay, if he's a buddy of Trump. Why would you say that about your buddy's kid? What a, if that's true, because he didn't mention that on the news last night. I mean, he didn't seem like a Trump kind of guy to me, but maybe he is. I don't know. What the hell do I know? I don't know anything about politics. You know, it seems to me any sort of people that are on Trump's side aren't going to say anything. You would Because they know it's going to end their career. God, I just, to say that about an 18-year-old kid, it's like, what are you doing, you creep? Yeah, it okay. looks like Mike Mike is saying that he's in the lifestyle and entertainment space. I'm yes. not aware of who he is in L.A., so I'm like, I don't know. All I know is him. Is he always has inflammatory statements on Twitter, and I think that has kind of become his calling card. So where did you – who told you that he was one of Trump's buddies? Why would you say it about your buddy's kid? That's um, weird. Because he often makes very inflammatory statements that are – feel a little bit more to the right than to the left. Really? Because I don't even know who the guy is. I never even heard of him. And let's be honest, people don't think when they're writing on Twitter. Oh no, yeah, I'm barely on good. Twitter anymore. It's not worth it, I honestly. Don't go on Twitter. I don't go on any. Of it. I, I go on Facebook. That's about it. But yeah, I don't understand this talking about somebody's teenage kid. I, I, I would advise everyone if I ever have another child that turns eighteen, shut up. Okay, <laughs> there you go. He's known to be very shy to Baron Trump. He really likes yes. to stay out of the, the public eye. And I think he's more like his mom, Melania. Yeah, so, yeah. And she doesn't like the public eye either. She is staying far away from Donald Trump's political campaign. I, sh I think she's only going to be making select appearances. She's not really on board with this. So. so do you think this guy's mentally ill? No, I think he just likes the attention. But you got to be nuts to draw that kind of attention to yourself what are you crazy my <laughs> god yeah but that's what twitter has devolved to oh, really? honestly right. it has yeah, un unfortunately right. under elon musk's reign it has really turned into it was already a mess let's like i'm not gonna right. sit there and say right. it wasn't a mess but um it really you know especially as a journalist oftentimes if someone doesn't like what i write about they will mm. send me death threats and i will report them and the prior regime that would be taken care of, the accounts would be taken offline, the tweets would be handled. Now they're like, sorry, free speech. And I'm like, okay, what? I guess I go to the co cops with this. Yeah. Free it's speech really... to attack somebody is free speech? Really? Uh, yeah. That's Elon has just nice. said, I think in the last week or so, that hate speech is okay because it's under oh, free God. speech. Oh, God. Um, and so it's really why I don't go on too much, especially as a female, the threats that you get are often of sexual violence and, you know, that type of thing. So it's not great. Okay. Let me run something by everybody on the show. And Kristen, you're going to have to pretend you're a guy in this one. Okay. Okay. So I'm talking to four guys now. Which name would you change first? Elon or Musk? 
What a horrible name that is. Change it to X. <laughs> yeah, just change it to X. Exactly. <laughs> Call me X from now on. Have you have you seen his kid's name? Oh yeah, it's like Berditzman or something, isn't it? I I bet he wishes it in tw- twenty years that it, it uh, was Berditzman. It's like numbers and letters and dashes. Oh, it's oh, you know, God. it's a it's a choice, is what I'll say. Yes. Well, we're Anyone that, that chooses to have kids with Elon is making a strong choice. Well, that's true. <laughs> I would have to agree with you. Or, or the, any of these public figures. I think well, this might be the worst era for public figures I have ever seen. These are horrible people. Well, I just think that we're finally calling out everyone's BS. They've gotten away with it for decades. They they were ho- horrible people. Yeah. Uh, they still are. But you know what? They don't have that freedom and that power. I mean, if you're looking at what's happening with the royal family, we're watching the yeah. royal family fall in real time because mm-hmm. uh, people are calling out their BS and how they've manipulated the press for years and how the, the British tabloids have been in bed with them. And it's kind of interesting to watch from uh, you know my side of the fence. It's really sad, though, that, that, you know, news services lie about that kind of stuff. I mean, honest to God, if you watched Fox for 10 minutes and then CNN for 10 minutes, you wouldn't even believe you're in the same country. I mean, That's why you don't watch either of them. <laughs> I don't. I can't. I, they both piss me off. to the, And the arrogance of these people. And I'll, let me throw this one quickly. And I don't know the woman. I don't know Kevin, whatever the hell his name is, that, that Asian woman that, that backed her car into a pond and drowned because she was had been drinking. That is, um, Mitch Kevin, Mitch McConnell's yeah Mitch McConnell's sister in law sister in law yeah, yeah yeah. So Mitch McConnell's sister in law is you know has a few drinks backs into a pond dies she drowned, and the host on CNN said, "Turns out she was drunk." Why would you say that? I mean, this woman's dead for Christ's sake. She didn't hurt anybody else. Why would you call her a drunk? What a Did you say thing. she was a drunk or she was drunk? Doesn't Those are matter. two different You're things. You're intoxicated. Mm-hmm. Let's go that route, not drunk. I guess God. you would say it's a drunk driving accident. I, I, yeah. Maybe that was a better phrase for it. Uh, he, he, uh, it just, he did it on purpose just to make it look. I hate news anchors anyway. There's a couple in Minneapolis I can stand the rest of my hate. Is that good? I just stay away from the news. It's just better. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, I, I, I should smarten up and do the very same thing. Just get the hell away from it and never watch it. Go outside. It's beautiful out there. There's a no, whole world. No, it's not. <laughs> oh, beautiful where you are. We're getting snow right now, Kristen. Oh, no. I'm in Palm Desert right now. So it is gorgeous <laughs> and sunny okay. and warm. So All right, got, I think Kristen's segment's over now. <laughs> yeah. We got AJ, we got Tevin, we got Timmy uh, in the snow. I'm sitting down here. It is pouring rain uh in west palm beach so you're the only one who is just this wonderful <laughs> weather yeah i posted a photo and i was like i am in my pina colada era oh, by the pool God. yesterday <laughs> and i love it your your listeners are so great they were like i know you don't drink much now is that a virgin or does that have alcohol in it yeah. i was like it did have rum in it um but i was one and done i i honestly i had one and it's mostly sugar, but I was like, oh my gosh, I drink so little that I'm like, I feel so drunk right now. I'm done. <laughs> From one drink. <laughs> one drink. Yeah. That's and pretty, pretty I wasn't impressive. driving or going anywhere. So I was like, I am good. No more pina coladas for me today. Another <laughs> thing that doesn't mix drinking and social media. Gotta be oh, careful. Oh God, yeah. you're right about that. Very bad idea. Yep. I remember, I remember those days, Tim. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I remember them. I used to wake up in the morning because you would do it overnight. You yes. would do it in like the wee hours, Tom. And I'm I'd be like, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I go, uh oh, it's Tom again. Yeah, I used to be one of those guys for people in the like new new listeners. I've had anything to drink now in 12 years, something like that, and whatever it is. And I didn't really care. I just quit and that was it. But my deal, and honestly, I think Catherine was the first one to point it out. Here's Tom. You get there. Hi, everybody. How you doing? You have a first drink. Oh, God, it's really great to see you guys. I'm so glad we came over. Then there's a second drink. Yeah, I'm, I'm having a really good time. Third drink. What the hell are you looking at? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Maybe I was guilty of that. I'm not really sure. But what are you going to do? Right? Yeah, I'm a giggly drunk, so that's the one good thing. So I'm is like- Catherine. 
when yeah. she, she giggles a lot when she drinks. It's hilarious. And I, I can't, I don't like being out of control either. So that's why yeah. when I'm like yesterday, I was like, that is good. I do not need another one. I okay, stop. you two. The, the show's about to wrap up. Any big Hollywood news that you can both contribute to? What's going on? Well, I like I don't want to impose on Kristen's time. I'm just like happy to hang out today, man. I, I had to know about the the whole deal with this uh dark side of kids TV show because oh yeah. my god, you get it's it's very hard to watch. I will warn you. It is really difficult to watch. Take a break, honestly. Um and if you are looking for something happy, I'm very excited. The Beetlejuice 2 trailer came out and boy oh, am i excited to see michael keaton back in that role i love him i think he's very good uh there is something about michael keaton that mm -mm. yep you don't <laughs> like him i love him i do too i i think he's terrific i really think he's, he's the best we have to from the mind of my buddy tim burton mm -hmm. guy's an amazing filmmaker you know yeah. he doesn't yeah, do he sequels is. though that's the interesting thing about this the only sequel he did prior to this Batman Returns. People have been begging for this Beetlejuice sequel for years. Well, decades, really, because it's yeah. 88, I think, the first one came out. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Long time ago. All right. All I have to say is Tevin, AJ, and I are fine, but Tim and Kristen are fair game. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Go for it, Mr. In Social Media. Come on. In a world. In a world. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Tim Lammers brought to you by Bradshaw and Bryant Personal Injury Lawyers seeking justice for the injured. Contact Bradshaw and Bryant at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. And Kristen Burt, Entertainment News, brought to you by North American Banking Company. Go to nabanco.com to learn more. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Any closing words, folks? Let uh, it go. snow, let it snow. Let us know. I'll, yeah, I'll be by the sun. But if you guys are all inside because it's cold, Shirley on Netflix with Regina King is really good. Don't ever point at me again. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. We'll talk to you guys later. Thanks a lot. Chris and Bert, Tim Lammers, ladies and gentlemen, Tevin, AJ, wrapping it up. That's everything. That's it. Yep. All right. Well, the family shows up in about 15 minutes. Thank you. Yep. Have a good weekend. You too.